Hello, I'm Melanie and I'm from the Happy Foot Clinic and I'm just going to give a little chat about your nails. It's more specifically aimed at your toenails, but it's just to give you some hints and tips on about how to cut your nails and common pitfalls that people make when they cut their nails. As you know, your toenails and your fingernails are the same thing, they just have a different function. The thing with your fingernails is, is that you can cut them all different shapes. So you'll see people kind of like pointy nails, there's sort of all different looks of nail, flat across nail, long nail, flipper nails, all kinds of nail. Nails with things on them, nails, anything goes with your hands. But with your feet, it's really different because your feet aren't forgiving like that and they just won't let you do it. And you're actually going to end up with a lot of problems if you don't cut your nails correctly. But before we talk about cutting your nails, we need to understand a little bit about the structures. So you've got your nail plate is basically the structure we see on top. Underneath that is the sterile matrix. From the bottom here, underneath there, is the germinal matrix. And that's where the nail grows from. And what happens, it's like a conveyor belt, it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And imagine, imagine rabbit's teeth, they just keep growing as well. It's like that, they just keep growing. Which is why you need to cut them regularly. At the bottom here, we've got the luna. The luna is a part of your germinal matrix, and it doesn't do anything well, it's there. It's just part of that, and we just see that sort of white, sort of crescent shape on your nail surface. Different people have different shape the lunars and it doesn't mean a thing, don't worry about it. It's perfectly normal. It's norm what's normal for you. So don't worry about it. The bit of skin along the bottom here is this is the nail fold. And over there that you've got the eponychia which is like your cuticle area and this is protecting your germinal matrix and the sterile matrix, sterile matrix underneath. It's just protecting this area and it's just stopping any germs from getting in here. Which is why you probably don't really want to be messing about with it too much. You've got to be quite careful because if you damage it, you can cause infections to go in there. So you've got to be careful and know what you're doing. Along the sides here, you've got your soul car. Your soul car. You know, this is where your nail is, your nail goes in the edge there, sometimes it can go underneath and you've got the bit of skin around it, sometimes it looks a bit fleshy on some people, this is just your nail wall. And then at the top you've got the free edge of your nail. So what are people doing wrong when they cut their nails? It comes to the time of month when you cut your nails. For most adults you're going to be looking to cut your nails from anything from four to six weeks. Old adults could be cutting their nails anything from six to ten weeks depending on your age and your rate of growth and growth can be affected by illness so remember if you've got health issues it might be affecting your nail growth as well and just different people have different rates of growth. Children your nails can be growing as quick as nine to 12 months from uh, base to top. And teenagers could be similar rates as well. So that will dictate how often you need to cut your nails. What some people think when they cut their nails, they think, oh gosh, I've got to cut my nails again. What am I going to do? I'm just going to cut this way. Everything I can get, get to, I'm just going to cut it away which is great, except it's going to cause you problems. If you cut your nails too, too short, say you, you, you manage to get it down there, I don't know how, but you can over a period of time get it too, too short. And then you've got this bit of skin here, that's kind of goes sort of fleshy, because your nail is like an exoskeleton, it's an extrasensory thing and it's giving your body information about the world around it and it's sending all those signals up to the brain what's going on. So if you're cutting it too short you're kind of cutting off the full message if you like. So that's why it's not good to do that. 
And another thing you might find is like here, you've got, you've already got your soul card. You might find that it starts getting really tight to clean the corner. And if you're getting that, it is because you're cutting your nails too short. And it's a cycle of people that do this, you're cutting them too short and so you're thinking, oh, it's a bit uncomfortable. So next time you cut them a bit shorter again and it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going, but the problem doesn't go because you're still doing it. You need to get your nail to its optimum length. Another common mistake is, say you've got some tightness here and you think to yourself, oh, it's really hurting. Well, I know, I'll cut my nail round. So they go and they cut the nails round. They do a nice round cut. Right round. Big mistake. You should never cut your toenails like that. Reason being is because underneath the sulcus area, you got your your nail wall and everything and that bit of skin you've still got some nail under there particularly if you've not done this correct the correct way and that bit of nail could still be growing up through the skin and that's how you get ingrown toner ingrown toenails are really 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 painful and the other thing with an ingrown toenail is because your feet allow lots of bacteria into your body because the nature of the environment then they often become really infected so the wall then, it swells up and it's sort of, you can't really see what's happening. It gets really, really nasty. And so you keep thinking, well, I'll just cut a bit more nail away, but you're still cutting round and you're still missing that bit of nail that's underneath there that you can't see. And the problem just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And in worst case scenarios, you may have to have a partial removal of the nail because it's just, got so bad. Another common mistake is say you split your nail low down and you think to yourself well if I don't cut it away and I do understand what you, where you're coming from if I don't cut it away it's going to split and it's going to rip right off. Problem is if it's quite a, a bit of a way down when it rips anyway, it's going to hurt the sterile matrix underneath because with the nail plates on top of that, so it's going to bleed and hurt, which you don't want because that's going to be nasty. What you can do, I would suggest, is get a nail file, take away any rough edges, and then get yourself a clear base coat and paint your nail with that. And what the base coat should do is should just give a temporary repair over that broken bit of nail so that while it's growing up it's less likely to catch and rip it's not guaranteed but it's something you can do and you can always just add some more base coat perhaps once a week or something just to keep it stronger another thing that people often do is say you rip a bit of nail off and you, you've cookie monster to your nail you've, you've just got it looking nice I did this to myself the other week I was like oh, I can't believe I've just got my nail looking right and what I've done I've gone and bashed it again. The temptation again is to try and cut away as much now as possible but the risk is again you're going to risk getting an ingrown toe now and it's just going to be it's it's not going to look much better for doing that. What I suggest you do is where it's normal shape leave it, get a nail file underneath the area that you've I don't know, chips away, whatever it is you've done, and just take away any rough edges and make sure any rough bits on top are gone. And then, like I said before, put some clear base coat over the nail and leave it alone and just let it grow out and then you can just trim it and it should get back to normal. So what is the optimum nail shape? People often say, oh, you meant to just cut it straight across, that's it, right straight across, like a square. It's a bit of an ugly shape, I think. You can just gently round, just to give it, just for a little bit of an aesthetic. I'm not talking like a round round, like a fingernail round, just a gentle, very, very gentle curve, and just get a nail file on these edges just to take any way, away any rough edges. And that's all you need to do. The optimum length is about one to two millimetres. 
don't really want it to go any longer because if it goes any longer where you've got this sort of fleshy skin here in that corner you could end up with an ingrown toenail which can get painful remember we're talking a lot about ingrown toenails and like I've said the I mean the best thing to cut your nails with is nail scissors or nail clippers that's what they're designed for and I really do urge you to do that and if you do those things hopefully you will have lovely pretty happy nails so thank you for your time. I'm Melanie and I hope you've enjoyed and learned something useful today.